there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review of Golden Open Acrylics. I've been using these for a couple of weeks now, and I actually purchased them probably about four months ago, maybe longer, um, four or five months ago. Um, and the reason I purchased them is because I heard that they kind of acted like oils. They would stay wet for a long time, so you could manipulate them on the canvas longer. Um, because I have really, I use acrylics a lot, but I don't necessarily do a painting with them. I'll use them for backgrounds. I'll use them in art journals. I'll use them on scrapbooks. I'll use them on cards. I'll use them on furniture. But I don't usually, you know, grab a canvas, grab my acrylics, and do a painting. That's kind of a rarity. Um, but I also really love painting with oils. And the only thing I don't like about oils is that, you know, you have to find a place to dry them, um, you know, for a few weeks. And then, you know, they still need to fully cure. And it's just a little frustrating. So I was wondering if these might kind of uh, fit the bill as kind of like an in-between type of... Um, type of thing. Now, of course, water cleanup would be like the water mixable oils, but water mixable oils still take as long to dry as regular oils. So that's why I wanted to try these open acrylics. And I also wanted to see what the hype was about, if they really were going to stay wetter longer than like, say, just using a retarder or a slow dry medium with regular acrylics. And, um, and I was able to find all of that out. So I did compare using these um, versus using acrylics with a slow dry medium. And I did find that these stayed open a lot longer. In fact, my dabs of paint on my palette would be still open, still usable the next day. Um, granted, I paint in a cool location. Um, it's a basement. It's probably in like the mid 50s right now. So it's, you know, if you're in a desert, it, I wouldn't imagine they would stay open as long, but you definitely notice the difference between a regular acrylics. So what I'm going to do first is show you, I'm going to show you three paintings. This one here I did with just the open acrylics. And um, one thing I noticed is that they have a little bit of a gloss to them, kind of like, um, kind of like, Oils will, as you kind of build them up, like these these final layers have a little bit of a sheen to them. Um, kind of like how if you're oil painting and you'd be adding oils to your paint to make them, you know, layer up. So I don't know if it's because it's not fully cured. That could be it. But that's something I noticed here. Now, I had to do a lot of mixing for these neutral tones because the set that I purchased was the modern set. So what I got in this set was a titanium white uh phthalo green a pyrrole red and they do golden does hand painted swatches on their tubes so you can see how um uh, i don't know if you can let me try to see if you can see that you see how you can see lines through the paint it shows you how transparent they are like the pyrrole red is semi-transparent this magenta quinacridone magenta is very transparent the ultramarine blue is semi-transparent the um hansi yellow it says Hansa yellow opaque, but you could still see those black lines in there. Um, and then our titanium white is probably the most opaque out of all the colors. Oh gosh, do you want to focus in there? There we go. Is the most opaque out of all the colors. So uh, there was a lot of mixing that had to be done to get the grays and the browns that I was using. Um, so basically I would take, I would either mix an orange with the red and yellow and then add a little blue to it, or I would just use a phthalo green and red plus white to make the gray. I could add a little yellow to that to brown it up a little bit. But anyway, um, that's that's how I did that. A lot of mixing, but it was fun. I really liked how long I could keep going in and blending. So one thing I wasn't prepared with or prepared for is that if you dropped water on the background um, it, and you didn't see it right away and you went to blot it up, it would lift the paint right off. And also, like if I wanted to try to go over something um, and I had a brush that, uh, brush full of paint and water, you know, not, not like underbound, it would just be like I took a wet brush and I mixed up some paint and I came over, um, I could actually end up lifting up the paint underneath uh, kind of easily. So that's something you want to keep in mind. They don't cure as quickly as acrylics. So you could, like, if you could have a painting you think is pretty dry and accidentally you, you know, you have a wet brush and, you, and you're, you drop some water on the paint, painting, you don't realize it, it could actually work in and um, reconstitute that paint and lift it. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, slow drying is slow drying for good and for bad. <laughs> So you just want to kind of keep that in mind. So this one was just the op open acrylics. I almost felt like it was staying wetter lo too long because I was, like when I was painting the cherries, I was putting the paint on kind of thick thinking, oh, I need to do that so I'll have time to blend like I would do with regular acrylics. Definitely do not need to do that with these paints. They stay open. They stay wet. They stay wet on your palette. You know, you can come back a couple hours later keep painting, like if the paint's in the daub, if you have like a paint kind of like smeared out a little bit, like you've mixed it and it's a thin layer, it'll dry and not be able to be picked up so easily. But like a dab of paint, that's going to stay wet. 
Mm. So the next experiment I did after trying, like, my, that's my control painting. I did it, you know, just with the open. Then I decided to see what if I used open acrylics plus regular acrylics, and that's what I did here. And I have a real-time version of this that's free for anybody to watch in Critique Club. And I have, um... I have the sped up version of this on Sketchbook Sunday from a couple weeks ago. So this one I used the colors from Golden and then I also used some like Winsor & Newton M. Graham or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Liquitex and M. Graham acrylics. And I found they mixed very well and what would happen when I mixed the colors is that they would kind of cut the properties in half. So my regular acrylics would take twice as long to dry, but my open acrylics would take half as long to dry. So it kind of, they kind of split the difference in the drying time. I also, on this painting, compared using the traditional acrylics with a slow dry medium and using the open acrylics and like mixing it up on my palette. The slow, the, the paintless slow dry medium still dried quicker than using the open acrylic. So I don't know what sort of magic the golden people did on those open acrylics, but they, they are something innovative. It is not just like putting slow dry medium in with your acrylics, but if you already have a bunch of your acrylics, try the slow dry medium first because that's buying one tube versus buying several tubes. And if you do end up getting a small set like I did, you can mix them in with your other acrylics. They're fully compatible. It even says in the paperwork from Golden that you can mix them with other acrylics. So um, it's just going to make them dry quicker or it's going to take away some of that open time. It's not going to make it, but it will make your old acrylics dry slower. Gosh, I hope that makes sense. But I really enjoyed being able to use them with the paints I already had uh, because I was thinking, oh great, now I like these. Now I need to buy this. I need to buy yellow. I need to buy Ultra Beam Blue, I need to buy um, Burnt Sienna, because I'm thinking, oh, because they don't have those, you know, tried and true colors I'm always using. But I'm like, no, I can use them with what I have and then decide how much I want to invest later. Because, you know, they are not cheap. Golden paints are not cheap, at least as far as, I, I, as, far as I'm concerned, as far as the acrylics that I usually use, golden acrylics are not cheap. Um, but they do come in much larger tubes, so um, I'll probably end up getting like a five ounce tube of the titanium white and probably some two ounce tubes. Like this is um this is a 22 milliliter, so it's about a third of what two ounce tube. So and a two ounce tube starts around seven bucks online at your you know your big box art suppliers online. Um, I'm talking like Jerry's Autorama, Blick, uh, Cheap Joe's stuff like that. Um, so it's I don't think it's I don't think it's overpriced, but you know once you're getting like you know four or five six tubes and it you know it adds up. So I love that I can use it with what I already have and kind of get a little bit of the best of both worlds. So as I was doing this and I was so excited that they were blending together, I thought I started to think of this paint I used to I, I reviewed a few years ago. I really liked it, but it was hard to get in the United States, and that was a paint called Aquila, which is a Japanese paint uh, by Kusakabe. And it is an alkyd uh, water-based alkyd resin, and I thought, hmm, these act so much like that. I wonder if they're the same type, they're the same paint, um, like the same formulation. So in this last painting here, I'm going to show you. I used those interchangeably. I use both the um, the uh, Kusakabe Aquila paints and also the golden acrylics and uh, the golden open acrylics, and they didn't. They they work fine together. I'm gonna keep an eye on this because I've just painted that like a few days ago. I haven't noticed any cracking. Everything has dried. Nothing sticky or anything. But it almost felt like using them together and mixing them together, which they did mix and they they painted fine. It almost felt like it was back to a regular acrylic again. It didn't seem to have the the long drying or the long open properties that either of the paints had on their own. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But I did love the matte finish that I got here. It just looks a little bit more like gouache versus um, versus acrylics, which I really liked. Um, and I also thought that this kind of had... I, I feel like the open acrylics, maybe maybe because you can blend them more, it just gives you less of a plasticky look. Although, again, when I went in and I put my high, my like my final like details, where I went in with that magenta pretty much on its own, it does have a little bit of a glossiness to it, just like we did in the cherries. So, oh gosh, I got stuff falling here. Um, stuff for future reviews. <laughs> Uh, so just like the cherries, I got kind of that gloss going on there. So I don't know if that's going to eventually, um, I don't know, dry out. It doesn't really feel tacky, but I can definitely feel that it feels a little different than the background. So I don't know if that's going to go away. But when I did mix it with the um, Aquila, I got a nice, beautiful matte finish. And But like I said, this is purely an experiment. Those paints are hard to find. I can't imagine anybody else at home is going to be trying this because um, I would just 
probably use them on their own, but I thought that was exciting because then I could use my Aquila paints and not worry about running out of white. Um, I also experimented using the Aquila paints and using some regular white acrylic, just inexpensive uh, store brand acrylic paint um, in this background, and they worked, that worked fine too. So I'm going to just use my Aquila paints. If I need another color, I'll just grab an acrylic and, um, and go on and then... I will report back to you to see if anything cracks. I will link up to that website just to just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, if you do decide to order the Aquila paints, I really like them. Order yourself like an extra couple tubes of white if you buy one of the sets because um, that white just goes fast. And, you know, you want to make sure you can use up all the paint that you bought. Um, even though you can mix it with acrylic white so far, it seems. If I was to place an order, I would place an order for more white. But uh, I really like this paint. I am kind of surprised because I'm not a big acrylic paint fan, but man, I love it. Um, uh, these little sets here, like I have this set, I think I got it at AC Moore with a 60% off coupon before they were started going out of business. Um, so I paid like $16 for it. I see them online at like uh, Jerry's and Blick uh, for I think around $22 for these six sets. And there's this set, which is the modern set. And there's a set called, I think, Traditional. And it has like um, ultramarine blue and Van Dyke brown and white and um, maybe a lizard and crimson. Uh, I don't know if it has ultramarine blue or thalo blue, but... Um, but that, you know, you could choose whatever one you think you would like to use the most. And then maybe if there's another color that you just really rely on picking up a tube. And they have tubes and jars. So they, they come from two ounce tubes, which are three times, if you're buying them individually, three times as big as this. Uh, four ounce tubes, a or maybe it's a four ounce jar, a five ounce tube. And then there's like a 16 ounce jar, I think it's, or an eight ounce jar. Um... But I'd probably, I would probably get the white in a five ounce tube just because I find tubes a little bit easier to use than jars. And I'd probably just get two ounce ones of other colors because with acrylic paints, they have a shelf life. You don't want to overbuy or buy larger tubes than what you can use up in a couple of years because um, it can get chunky and you don't want to waste it because, you know, you spend good money on it. Although I will say the artist grade acrylics last longer than craft grade acrylics. And generally your artist grade paints have um, formulated into them a... Um, an ability to stay good over like several freeze thaw cycles. So, you know, if you're getting it shipped to you and it like freezes in a truck or you forget and you leave it in your box, in your paint box in your car overnight, you know, it could take a few of those freeze thaws before your paint is toast. Um, and I think that's pretty standard in most um, artist grade acrylic paints. I don't recommend letting that happen. I recommend always bringing your acrylics inside um, and in a, you know, a place that doesn't freeze, just like with glues and whatnot. But the, um, the more expensive paints have figured out how to do that. I don't know how, but they figured it out. I'm not a chemist, so that's not my job. That's their job. My job's to paint. Their job is to make the paints. That's why I don't make, uh, that's why I very rarely dabble into making any, any paints unless it's a dire emergency or I'm just feeling curious. Um, so there you have it. Definitely give these a thumbs up. I would highly recommend them if you are an oil painter, but you want something that's going to dry a little faster, or if you're an acrylic painter and you're, you're, you'd like to dabble in a slower drying medium. Maybe you'd like to try oils, but you don't want to get new brushes, new solvents, new this, new that. Try those. And, um, I think you'd be able to tell whether you liked that longer drying time and, um, and whatnot. I mean, water mixable oils are wonderful. I love like the Lucas Berlin ones. They are, you don't sacrifice any of the, the look of traditional oils, but, um, but you can clean them up with soap and water, which is nice, but that's a, that's a topic for another day. This is just about our acrylics, our open acrylics. Um, and I would only use these for canvas painting. I wouldn't buy these to use them to paint a, um, a dresser, you know, cause I think having stuff Unless you were just painting, like doing some, oh, this would be good for rose mauling too. I think if you're doing, say you painted a dresser and you wanted to rose maul on it or something like that, I would paint it all in a regular acrylic or latex paint, let it cure or chalk paint or something that's fast drying. Then I would use these and do your rose mauling or do your toll painting or do whatever it is that you want to. You're distressing, you're um, antiquing. I think that would be another really nice use for these. So um, lots of, lots of different options and lots of different uses for these, but um, just remember, they dry slow, so you want them in those situations where you want that extra blending time. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I really enjoyed painting these paints, and um, if the tutorials for these aren't on my YouTube channel yet, well, they will be soon, so you can look forward to them if you haven't seen them yet, or go looking for them. I think 
these two will be up by the time this review goes up. I don't know if the cherries will probably be up sometime after, or maybe they'll be up by then. I don't know. I'm kind of working ahead when I have quiet times in the house, so I never know when something's going to post. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed these reviews. Until next time, happy crafting!